Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Pace Studios. We are now live with Lucy Wainwright Roche. Lucy, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to see you again. We're in this uh, reconstructed tape room, similar to the first time that we met. And uh, uh, yeah, happy to, to host you here. Glad to be back. This um, this song is called Heroin. It was the first single off my new record. And uh, yeah. All right. Love to hear it. Sometimes I see your favorite shot It's one you wanted but you never got It was of me But not me I've been busy Thanks. Yeah. So that is, um, that song was written about by, by this publication, Paste. Uh, Paste gave it some loves pretty recently. Yeah, and Paste uh, premiered the, uh, the single. And um, that's heroin as in, as in smack, not as in heroin, like the female protagonist. Correct. Um, Although it does have female protagonists. <laughs> but yeah, yes, totally like the drug. It's a cheerful little number. The whole record is exceedingly mm. cheerful. That's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> Hauntingly beautiful was the first comment that came through on the on the Facebook. Oh, good. Okay, well, that's seems, one yeah, way of looking at it. Whoever commented that, that is, um, I mean, that, that's accurate. That's that's what I think about it. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. Thanks for coming and sharing these songs. Um, can you talk a little bit about the uh, the arrangement of, uh, so Little Beast is the album that's out right now, and you released it on, on your 
label. And um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the arrangement on the album version versus what you're doing here today? Sure. Um, yeah, the, the arrangements on the record are, are not voice and guitar for the most part. They're, they're a little more fleshed out, although um, we had a hard time. Uh, the producer, Jordan Brooke Hamlin, and I, we went back and forth on all these songs about what version to use. We, we kind of followed the through line of each song down several paths and end up ended up with several different versions of them. So um, that last one, Heroin, has has um, a bunch of different instruments on it. And this next one that I'm going to sing um, on the album is on a piano, and I'm going to play it on, on the guitar. This song is... Um, there's a little duo of songs on the record. One's called This Song Is About You, and the other one is called This Song Is About You Too. And so this is This Song about Is About You Too. Um, yeah. Kind of has a... I wrote it after a visit to L.A., No. <laughs> well, is it evident in the song that person um, still not know? I'm not sure. It may be. You know, people say, write, write what you feel when you're writing your songs, which is all well and good until the record comes out, and then you have to worry about <laughs> whoever you wrote about. So um, I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on what happens with that <laughs> after that record's been out for a while. <laughs> well, everything that I've heard, everything that I know about you as a songwriter and as a performer leads me to believe that even if it's not the most complimentary thing that you said about that person, that it, I mean, these songs are beautiful and well, thanks. Uh, whoever it's about and whatever that subject matter, they will, they'll, they'll get over it or just be completely uh, floored and, uh, and flattered by the fact that you took the I time hope to so. write it. I hope so. And if, and if they don't feel that way about it, I'm going to send them to you. All right. I'll let them know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is This Song Is About You Too. I take it all back. I was wrong all along the way. Guess even the fairest flowers wilt and that fire we built was a fake. But I don't want a hard time Drink a little more wine Not to worry, my dinner is fine How about yours? And you're beautiful, yes we agree And people like me will love you From afar for the rest of your days That star always stays above you some 
star always stays above you that star always stays that star always stays above you all right that's great <laughs> i like that song a lot thanks yeah Hopefully that person is uh, the the chord change on uh, not to worry my dinner is fine mm-hmm. and comes back uh, pick a bridge over the river That's, yeah whatever the lyrical content of that is, you can get away with anything you want it's good over I'm, that chord change <laughs> because it's amazing it's I'm so glad you feel that way <laughs> yeah and normally it takes me a number of listenings before I've heard the lyrics at all I'm mean, gonna tend to pick up on the, those chord changes first and that one was I wasn't expecting it at all and it's it's yeah. awesome. Good. Well, thanks for listening so carefully. <laughs> yeah. um, so you you uh, briefly mentioned it about uh, you and Jordan were going back and forth about different iterations of these songs and couldn't necessarily decide on the one for, for the album. So, I mean, Little Beast exists as an album, but there's also a, a box set uh, companion piece with with alternate versions of yeah. each one of these songs. Can you talk to us a little bit about about that box set? Yeah, there's the the record Little Beast, and then there's um, the Strangers edition of Little Beast, which includes the normal record and the alternate record. And the alternate record basically consists of the alternate versions of each song that we didn't end up choosing for the main record, and, and a lot of them are very different from the one on the regular record. Um, couple of them i think one or two of them are the original demos on the strangers edition but then some of them are just have totally different instrumentation totally different feel um so it's kind of like um a choose your own adventure type setup where you can hear the record in this version or in this version and they're quite different so um if you've become familiar with one version of the record, there's still another world in which the other songs lived in, in kind of an alternate universe where they sounded totally different. That was sort of how we thought about it. And um, um, we just ended up loving the alternates so much that we couldn't kind of leave them on the cutting room floor. So they exist in the box set um, uh, at this point. That's the only place that they exist. But um, it's cool. It's cool mm-hmm. to have kind of a record of the different ways in which we tried the different songs. So. Nice. Did we nail this segue completely? Is the next song that you're about to play one of those tunes where that's where the uh, uh, Strangers Edition is vastly different than the than the. Uh, it wasn't beast? gonna be, but it could be. <laughs> it's up to you. My <laughs> segue is course? not that important. No, okay. no, no, no. Do what you were gonna do. <laughs> okay. Anyway, were we going into the Coverland or? Yes. Yeah. This let's is do cover that. Land. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is a song that probably everybody's going to know who hears this. And uh, it has been said about me that uh, I'm kind of a dirge machine. You can kind of give me any sort of upbeat number, and I can kind of spin it into a dirge for you. So you might say that's what this is. Um, This is a great song that so many people love, and um, recently I've just felt like uh, this kind of a version of it says a lot these days. So, um, yeah, that's what this is. Gonna keep 
A little, a little deeper into what it was about that song that really grabbed you and made it feel like right now was the right time yeah. to do it. Because I feel like I've, I've heard. A, I mean, yours is absolutely gorgeous. Thanks for sharing it with us. We, we had uh, like KT Tunstall, Mike McCready from uh, Pearl Jam, who didn't come in, uh-huh. but and one of the girls from Thunder Pussy and their uh, uh-huh. Pacific Northwest band did a cover of that. And KT came in uh, to the studio and did "I Won't Back Down." Mm-hmm for reasons that might be similar or might be totally dissimilar to, to what really grabbed you about it. I mean, is it social justice? Is it like, what, what yeah, really was it I, that um, made it feel like this is the right time? I was out on the road last fall. Um, and in the same couple of days, Tom Petty died and, um, the shooting in Las Vegas happened. And, um, so the first show that I had after that, I wanted to do a song of his, and I was also so kind of blown apart by the 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 news um, and how bad the news has been for years now. Um, and somehow that just jumped out at, at me as, as the song to do. And, and I've been playing it in my shows for a year now, and um, people really seem to respond to it. I think people are tired, but they uh but they also are motivated and and have a lot of strong feelings about what's going on in the world these days and everything that's in the news and and somehow that version of the song I've found it seems like people connect to to both the pain of it but also the determination of it and it was it I've always loved that song but in a kind of a Oh, I've heard that song. I've heard that song. I've heard that song. But I, I appreciate it in a different way now um, than I ever have before, um, in a sort of a deeper way. Um, and I love that about so, sometimes songs that you've heard years and years and years over and over again, and then you see them in a slightly different light, and it, they have a whole other life that that you might not have expected. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your interpretation of that was was gorgeous. I mean, it hit Thank me you. in a. I promise this is not going to be about me at all. But I, you <laughs> know that I just learned about. A, a death in my circle yeah the, an hour less than an hour ago that just yeah. happened and you singing that song you know there's really not a lot about that particular topic in that song mm-hmm. but that's how I interpreted it when I was hearing it just now and it's yeah. it hits in a very very visceral way so thank you for uh for doing that I appreciate it well, a lot thanks thank you um, so can we, we've got a, a bonus song. We're going to hear another one off of Little Beast, which is, can you tell us about uh, what you're going to do for it? Sure. Um, this one is one of the ones that has a different, um, a different, two very different versions. And that we actually released this as a single, but we released it as an EP with both versions. Um, so this song's called Ohio is for Lovers, and the two versions are very different. The one on the record is kind of a slower more piano based version and then the one that's on the EP which we released um is more of a for lack of a better word there's more of a band on that one um so and now and now this is the voice and guitar version so this is called Ohio is for lovers This is the legend we prefer Where we're still hiding under cover 
Oh, I was for lovers like you told me. We drive one county line that seem better days. It's one you mentioned on a clear night. Remember you thought I might be afraid. Well, you were right. You said she claimed your head. Well, go on and try to clear your good mind. Or stop and buy supermarket flowers and search for her for hours in your spare time. Hard pressed, everyone's dressed to win the game. Thank you for coming here and sharing uh, the three three songs from Little Beast with us and the the Tom Petty cover. Thank you. Yeah, it sounded great. Uh, so best of luck on Little Beast, which uh, which came out a month ago. It's out in the world right now, and then and the companion piece also the box set uh, Little Beast Strangers Edition, which is available on your website. Yep. Scott. Um, alternate versions of uh, of every one of the songs. So uh, thank you again. It's great to see you as yeah, always. Yeah, great Thanks to see you. By. Thanks for having me. And uh, please visit us again. I hope to, we cross paths either out in the wild or maybe in this room again. Me too. I hope so too. Um, we really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. You too. All right.